Hi there, it's Tim again with another do-it-yourself video. If you're like a lot of people, you've probably used one of these, which is a weldless fitting to install a port on your brew keg or your brew pot. What we're going to talk about today is how to install a half-inch NPT fitting onto your keg or your brew pot by soldering it on. Eliminates any chance of any kind of leaks, and you can crank on any of your quick disconnect fittings or your ball valves and not have to worry about it spinning like can sometimes happen with your weldless fittings. So let's get started. The next thing you need to do is figure out where you want to put your fitting. Here I've measured up about three and a half inches from the bottom of the keg and marked where I'm going to put my fitting. A couple things with a keg that you have to be aware of is you want to make sure that the very bottom of your fitting is above this lip going down to the skirt because we don't want to have it in in that curve there. The other thing is these vent holes. There's going to be four of them on the bottom of the of the keg. If you're using a turkey fryer base, you know anything like that, and a propane burner base, the heat really comes out of these holes. So you don't want to have anything right next to or directly above any of these vents on here. So what I've done is just measured and put it about halfway in between those two holes. Okay, now that we have our pilot hole drilled, the next thing I'm going to use is what's called a step bit. And what this is going to allow us to do is open this hole up to 7 eighths of an inch. We want to keep it a little bit smaller in diameter than our actual fitting, because remember we're looking to make a dimple with this. When you use the bit, <clears throat> you want to lubricate it. I just use a little bit of uh, light machine oil, you can use WD-40, whatever you'd prefer. Just get it in your starter hole. And as you can see, it'll just start steadily opening up that hole larger and larger. Now I'm going to take this outside now to finish it up, uh, but just wanted to give you an idea what it looks like with the step bit. Okay, now we got our 7 8 inch hole drilled out in our keg. Next thing you want to do, you can use uh, sandpaper, I'm going to use my little Dremel tool. If you want to go around here, get rid of any burrs. And you want to smooth out all around the top and on the inside just to make sure any burrs that are in there are gone. Next we're going to get our dimpling tool together. Um, it's pretty simple. Most of these things you can find at a local hardware store. These two parts here I actually had to order. Um, I got them through McMaster Car. You can also find them on Amazon. I'll have a description at the end of the video um, with the part numbers and exactly what these are if you choose to order them and decide you want to do this yourself. They're inexpensive. They are stainless, but they're, I think this one was like $5 and this was like $4, so it's not real expensive. Everything else I was able to find at the local hardware store. This is just a 5 8 inch by 4 inch bolt coarse thread, two large washers, one smaller washer. Now this washer in the center here I had to open up a little bit so that it would slide freely over the bolt. Um, I just took my step bit, put the washer in a vise, drilled it out and then opened it up. And then your large nut. Um, to, to assemble this pretty much all you need to do You'll put one of your large washers over, then you'll put your die over top of that. This is going to serve as kind of a guide for the dimpling die. This will be on the outside of the keg. The bolt with the washer and the dimpling die will get it inserted from the inside of the keg. This will go on the outside. 
we have the small washer which is there's a little groove in this and that's just going to sit in there and center this bolt so it doesn't wobble while we're pulling it through the large washer on top will help keep that in the groove and also give a area for the nut to bear against as we're pulling it through and then what will happen is this will be on the inside of your keg and as you tighten the nut it'll draw this through the keg and create your dimple I'm going to try to get as good a video of this as I can um, it's a little difficult because of the size of the keg and having to reach through it to get the bolt in but here we have our bolt with the large washer and our dimpling die and we're going to reach through the back of the keg and bring that up through like that the next thing we're going to do is drop our large coupler over the top then we're going to add our small washer our large washer and our nut just like that now the one thing I will say is you do want to uh, lubricate that die with some of your machine oil or WD-40 that you used with a step bit okay now all we're going to do is we're going to take a 15 16 socket actually two of them one is going to go on the inside of the keg to hold the back of the of the bolt and then we're going to crank from the top here and pull this up through our keg <clears throat> now we'll see what kind of progress we're making back that off a little bit <clears throat> and you can see there starting to pull through and form our dimple so we'll just keep going a little bit and get that all the way formed at this point you want to go back over and you want to grab your half inch MPT fitting. The problem here is the, the tool, the die, is actually wedged in the keg. So we're going to use our half inch MPT fitting and we're going to take an end of it and butt it up against the dimpling die and use that combined with everything else to push the dimpling die all the way out of the keg. The way we're going to do that is just slide your fitting over top resting against the washer just where the dimpling die would have been we're going to take this whole assembly put it back in through the dimpling die that's wedged in the keg put our cap on the outside and put our nut on and when we do that it's going to push against that dimpling die and force the die out now don't go too far because you don't want to end up with the fitting wedged in the keg just enough to push the dimpling die out. Okay, and there you go. We have our, our dimple on our keg. Okay, at this point what I want to do is I have a paper towel here soaked with some acetone because we need to make sure this is really clean and we want to get all the oils that we used in the cutting process and in the drawing process of drawing the dimple I want to get all those out of there so I'll go around the outside here I'll go in from the inside make sure that's all good and clean after we do that I'm going to take a little bit of sandpaper and we want to go around every little bit of this because anything that's going to get soldered has to be good and roughed up with the sandpaper so there again I'll go around the outside here and we'll also go around from the inside and do all around the inside of this. This is the solder we're going to use. Now this is uh, specific to stainless steel. 
It's Stay Bright. You can get a little kit like this that comes with a roll of the solder and a bottle of the flux. You want to be careful with this flux. It's pretty nasty stuff, especially when you're heating it. Uh, do it outside or have really good ventilation. Uh, not a bad idea to wear gloves when you're handling it. It's an acid flux, and what it's going to do is actually acid etch the stainless, which will allow the solder to adhere to it. Now this is a 4% silver solder, and what we're going to do with this is we're going to take it and we're going to make two wraps around our fitting. Just like that. Bring the two ends up together. And then we're going to take it where the two ends meet. And just clip it off like that. And you'll see why we did that in a couple of minutes when we go to solder our piece together. Here we have everything we're going to need to install our fitting into the dimple of the keg to get ready to solder it. We've taken the fitting and we've sanded half of it, cleaned it up really well with our acetone. We want to clean all the rest of these parts really well too because we don't want any oil that we used when we pulled the dimple contaminating our solder joint. Once you've done that, you'll take a little bit of your flux, put a few drops around the outside of the sanded end, and then we'll put that over top of the bolt, making sure the sanded end with the flux is facing down. Now remember, be a little bit careful with that flux. It is an acid flux. Once you've done that, you'll insert this through the keg, take our backing cap with our washers, put it on the outside, put our nut on, and draw it in to the keg just like we did with the dimpler. Now here's the fitting pulled into the keg. Now if you notice, it sticks out a little bit just like the dimpler did. There's about an eighth inch of that sticking out as compared to this one over here that I did a little earlier where it's nice and flush. What we're going to do is make this fitting flush with the inside of the keg. The reason I do that is because when you go to clean the keg out, that way you're not hitting it when you're going around the inside of the keg scrubbing it out. So we're going to make it nice and flush like this one over here using our dimpling tool. Here's our dimpling tool installed back on our bolt upside down and you can see the little ridge right here. That's our fitting. What I'm going to do, we have the coupling on the outside here with the washer and nut. Now this fitting will pull in a lot easier than when we were dimpling, so I'm just going to hold it on this side and use an adjustable wrench on the outside. And we just want to give it a couple turns. And you can see there, as I'm turning it, it's drawing the dimpling tool in and pushing the fitting further in. Just unscrew it from the outside here. And there's our fitting, nice and flush with the inside. You want to just keep it flush with the inside of the keg. Don't pull it all the way down into the dimple. We're going to take a few drops of our flux and just go right around the edge here. Now we're going to take a pick, make sure to move that around, get it on every wet everything that we want to actually solder. Make sure that flux is moved around there real well. Then we're going to take our ring that we made earlier and just drop it right over the top like that. And we're ready to add the heat. When we start heating, you want to only heat from the outside, not from the inside. 
and concentrate most of the heat on the fitting itself. The fitting is so much thicker than the thin metal of a keg that by the time it gets up to temperature, the metal of the keg will be hot enough and you'll get a good solder joint on both your fitting and on your keg. And there we go, our solder melted, puddled up in our dimple there. Now just let this cool, don't move it, don't wet it, don't do anything with it, touch it, just let it cool on its own, and then we'll come back and clean up the joint a little bit, and we'll be all done. Here's the outside of our solder joint we just did. You want to look for this right here, you can see we got good wicking, the solder actually wicked down through the joint. And that's what we're looking for. Here's the inside of our joint, cleaned up a little acetone and sandpaper. You can see here, there's still a nice puddle left around there. So we got good wicking, we still have a nice solder puddle on the inside. So I'm pretty confident this joint should be good to go. Alright, here's our keg. Got it all finished up. We have our fitting installed, we tested it. There's no drips, there's no leaks, so everything worked out really good with that. If you decide you want to try to do this yourself and you have any questions or comments, please feel free to post them on the Facebook page at the end of the video. Hopefully you enjoyed the video and you learned a little something. Now go out there and do something useful with yourself and get brewing. This is Tim from the Kutztown Brew Crew, and we'll see you next time. Bye! Oh, what, did, what did you give me, Bud Light? What's, what's wrong with you? If you like to gamble, I tell you I'm your man. You win some, lose some, it's all the same to me. Pleasure is to play, it don't make no difference what you say. Sure you greed. The only card I need is the ace of spades. The ace of spades. All right. Playing for the high one, dancing with the devil, going with the flow. It's all the same to me. Similar to this, they'll have a seven or eleven snake eyes watching you. It's a devil if we quit. Tell the stakes are split, the ace of spades, the ace of spades, all right. You know I'm born to lose, gambling's for fools, but that's the way I like it, baby, I ain't gonna live forever. Yeah, don't forget the joker. Space, the ace of space, the ace of space, I'm right.